Hello friends, welcome back to my channel Geography with Joy. This is Suva Lakshmi and we are discussing about water resources. I hope you have enjoyed my previous class. In today's class, we will concentrate on part 2 and complete the chapter. Part 2 consists of modern methods of irrigation and conservation of water. Before starting, please subscribe my channel and press the bell icon. Don't forget to like and share my video as well so that we can reach maximum number of viewers and they can get the benefit of the class. So let's start. Modern methods of irrigation. Now what's a modern method? Modern methods are those methods that were invented in recent decades and are more efficient methods of irrigation. These help us use water economically without wastage. So they are gaining popularity. There are two types of irrigation, sprinkler irrigation and drip irrigation. In sprinkler irrigation, sprinklers are set up in the fields and are supplied with water by hoses from the source of water. Now let's discuss it in detail. This is a picture of sprinkler irrigation method. This method resembles the phenomena of rain. It is an easy and simple method of irrigation. Water is provided to the fields by spraying water droplets similar to rain through pipes. Hence, any loss of water is avoided. Problem of water logging is not present and balance of underground water is also maintained. This is very useful for sandy soil and uneven land. This system provides the best coverage regardless the size of the farm. Now, just have a look at advantages and disadvantages of sprinkler irrigation. First, go to the advantages. We must always see the positive side first. It doesn't involve any loss of water by seepage or evaporation. It is best suited for arid and semi-arid regions and also sandy and uneven land. It is the best method for conserving water as there is no wastage. It helps in conservation of soil. It increases the soil productivity. Water distribution is highly uniform. Labor cost is less. Now have a look at the disadvantages also. Operating cost is high. Water application efficiency is strongly affected by the direction of wind. Continuous supply of electricity is required. Hence, a large amount of electricity is consumed. If the water is not properly maintained, it can result in clogging. The next method is drip irrigation. It is one of the most efficient irrigation methods as it reduces wastage of water in agriculture. In this system, plastic pipes having holes in them are laid in rows near the crops or plants. Water seeps from these holes drop by drop just at the position of the roots. So it is called a drip system. In this picture, you can see the water is dripping down from the pipe at the root of the plant. This method delivers water directly to plants rather than areas and keeps soil evenly moist yet full of oxygen. No water is wasted at all. It is very effective in regions where availability of water is poor. But setting a drip irrigation system is costly. Hence, it is not used by all farmers. Now, let's compare the advantages and disadvantages of drip irrigation. First, the advantages. Fertilizer and nutrient loss is minimized due to localized and reduced leaching. 
water reaches directly to the roots of the plants soil erosion is less water distribution is highly uniform labor cost is less crop yield is increased in this method fertilization can be included with minimum waste of fertilizers these are the benefits we obtain from drip irrigation but do we have any disadvantages as well yes we do have like initial cost is high if water is not filtered properly and equipment is not properly maintained it can result in clogging the sun can affect the tubes used for drip irrigation but if we compare both the sides we can see that advantages are more than the disadvantages hence these methods are gaining popularity in the modern days In this lesson, we have learned both conventional methods and modern methods of irrigation. We have also learned about the advantages and disadvantages of all the methods. But in the present days, modern methods are gaining more popularity over conventional methods. What can be the reasons? Let's have a look. Modern methods are highly scientific. Though they are costly, it is a one-time investment in the long run. Distribution of water is even. There is no wastage of water. It reduces the time and labor required. No water logging, no soil erosion. These are the benefits which we are missing in conventional methods. Hence, modern methods are gaining more popularity. in the present days need for conservation of water do you know that 97% of all water on the earth is salt water which is not suitable for drinking only 3% of water on the earth is fresh water and out of that only 0.5% is available for drinking the other 2.5% of fresh water is locked in the ice caps glaciers atmosphere as an underground water or it may be too polluted to consume on the other hand although india receives nearly 4% of global precipitation it suffers from water scarcity it is mostly caused by over exploitation excessive use an uneven distribution of water ever growing population increasing urbanization and industrialization rising demand for food and cash crops water pollution and many more but we know that water is vital for all known forms of life without water we cannot imagine even a single day hence conservation of water is a must Conservation of water can help in sustainable development of our society. Conservation of water. Conservation of water means preventing and controlling of the depletion and degradation of water and making the best use of available water resources for the present and future needs. It is the practice of using water efficiently. to reduce unnecessary usage of water the objectives of water conservation are ensuring the availability of water for future generations energy conservation as water pumping delivery and waste water treatment facilities consume a significant amount of energy habitat conservation which will not only minimize the usage of water but also will maintain the water quality necessary steps to be followed for water conservation are developing water saving technology preventing water pollution promoting conservation practices like rainwater harvesting etc to create the awareness among the people 
22nd March is observed as World Water Day that highlights the importance of fresh water. The day is used to advocate for the sustainable management of freshwater resources. Rainwater harvesting. It is an activity of collecting rainwater directly or recharging it into the ground to improve groundwater storage in aquifer. In this method, the rainwater is collected on the rooftop and is directed to the dry tanks. The areas or states which are mostly practicing this rainwater harvesting technique are Tamil Nadu, Rajasthan, Maharashtra, Meghalaya, Assam, etc. The objectives are harvesting surface water and groundwater, prevention of water loss through evaporation and seepage, reducing loss of water by its running off, avoiding flooding of roads, meeting the increased demand of water, reducing groundwater contamination, and to raise the water table. Now, let's have a look at the importance or advantages of rainwater harvesting. It supplements water requirements, improves groundwater, reduces pollution, it reduces flooding and erosion, reduces the demand on groundwater. It can be used for non-drinking purposes also, can improve plant growth, reduces the water bill. Now let's have a look at the disadvantages of rainwater harvesting as well. It requires regular maintenance. Limited or no rainfall can limit the supply of rainwater. Requires technical skill to install. Initial installation cost is high. If not installed correctly, it may attract mosquitoes and other waterborne diseases. It has limited storage. This is a model of rainwater harvesting technique. As per this technique, rainwater can be collected over our rooftops and within our house premises and can be channelized through small PVC pipes into the underground pits, wells or borehole's to be used by hand pumps or from wells. These techniques are known by different names in different states. For example, in Rajasthan, it is called Johads. In Gujarat, it is called as Khadin. In AP and Talangana, it is known as Charuvu. And in Karnataka, it is called as Kere. This is a graphic design of rainwater harvesting technique. You can implement this technique at your homes to store and conserve rainwater for different purposes. Hooray! We have successfully completed the chapter, Water Resources. I hope you have understood and enjoyed my class. If you have any doubt or query, please write in the comment box. I will definitely look into it. Now, you may get lot many probable questions which are going to come in your exam. These are easily available in your textbook, reference book, model papers, and even online. Moreover, I'm also going to support you with lot many probable questions in my coming classes. Thanks for watching. See you in my next class with a new chapter. Till then, bye-bye and take care.